man, as your top guy, I'd rather have Cody than mm. anything Impact Wrestling's got at the moment. Um, just because like they, they just keep things legit. I mean, it's just they're not rechanging themselves every six months. They're keeping to what they know. They're not trying to be anything more than what they they you know they they are. They're not trying to be the WWE. They're not not trying to go for an over the top entrances because they know they can't compete. And sometimes Impact Wrestling is always playing second fiddle here because it's like you know some of the stuff you've seen in the past. I mean, what was it? Um, uh, what's that guy? Um, Young when he was when he was like, oh, yeah. wasn't the whole thing with Daniel Bryan going on, and then they suddenly went with him, and I was like, come on, that's a little bit too close. Like, oh, he's the underdog story, or Brock Lesnar, and then oh, we've got our own one, Bobby Lashley. It's like, oh man, sometimes it's just recreating what is going on in in the bigger company, and you know they're getting all their ex guys and not doing enough with some of their own talent. Um, but yeah, we're hearing now some of the guys like Spud, Matt, even he's gone. He's pretty loyal. Um, you know, and I've, I've met him a dozen times in, 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 you know, in person and I know him. He, he's an extremely loyal guy. He's nothing like his character. He's very down to work, but, uh, you know, I say good luck to him. I say, you know, get out of there now because if, if WWE is, 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 is offering, I'd even say go to ring of honor right now. I mean, go wherever you need to go, but get out of there because I don't think it's going to do him much good, uh, sticking around there for much longer. So, you know, we see, when when anybody talks about will WWE buy out <laughs> Impact Wrestling, <laughs> there's no point. You can just wait for their own talent to just leave. Uh, they, they don't need to do that. And the only thing they have that is uh, literally worth having would be the video archive. And man, the last three years probably uh, ain't worth squat. But uh, all that before that, just to have all the AJ Styles matches and you know, Sting matches and what he done there, all those things. Like, you could see WWE wanting that library, but they're, they're not bothered about the rings and, you know, the telly deals they've got. They're awful. Um, or, or and, and they have no roster. I mean, literally, that I think they only had, like, three guys on full-time contracts. And, in fact, one of them's gone now. That was Kurt Angle. So, um, yeah, I mean, unbelievable, Matt, um, to, to think, again, they're still holding on. I don't know how much longer they can go, um, quite frankly, but oh, I just think, crikey, just, just uh, you know, it needs to come to an end. Like, I can't see any value. I think, I think honestly, Anthem, if they can't do it, I'm pretty much saying nobody can. Jeff Jarrett and Global Force and all this stuff, man, what a nightmare, um, the whole thing. I'm surprised, Matt, that it's still getting views. I don't know who's watching this stuff. Actually, probably our mutual friend. <laughs> yeah, he still, he still goes there. He's still trying to have those glory days. Yeah, back. wow. Well, it's yeah, loyal. Yeah, yeah, extremely loyal there. Um, okay, now, talking about more positive promotions of uh, of the things, I want to go across now to um, the east of the pro wrestling. That is going to be Wrestle Kingdom. And, um, yeah, we've been seeing some videos, Matt, of, of course, Chris Jericho uh, was was in Japan. He flew out and there was, um, you know, he turned up at one of the shows. I'm sure you saw the video, Matt, the attack, um, you know, the very bloody uh, attack that was done on uh, Kenny Omega and, and then at the press conference when there was a retaliation back, obviously making more and more waves with this match, trying to get a little bit more hype. And, um, and and obviously the stipulation added now that it's going to be a no DQ. Uh, we spoke about this uh, before, Matt, you know, how much buzz this match has got about it. And it's literally just one match, but everybody will be like tuning into Wrestle Kingdom uh, because they can sell it on a match, which is ridiculous when you compare it to WrestleMania because WrestleMania literally... WWE tries to sort of put five main events on if they can with all this craziness. And you think, blimey, you know, they sell it more on the idea that it's WrestleMania, not a match, which is a shame because, um, you know, the old school in me says you should always try and sell it on your main event. But uh, we, we do have that mentality here, Matt. And, and this match isn't even going to be the main event. But um, the waves this has sent across the pro wrestling world, Matt, has been quite uh quite decent considering you know they've not exactly spent a lot of money on this this is just literally videos coming out of social media sometimes here yeah uh, i mean you don't have to work your ass off for 
really to actually sell a match sometimes. And mm-hmm. just the sheer like credibility that Jericho brings with him everywhere he's ever been. And the fact, you know, that he hasn't wrestled outside WWE in like 18 years or so. And that this is a huge deal for him to actually single someone out and say, you know, you're the guy that I can't fight because you're not with the WWE, but I am going to fight you anyway. So screw it. You know, I'm just going to come to Japan and mm-hmm. kick your ass. You know, that, that's, that's some great storytelling right there. And uh, it sort of gets people, you know, it, I mean, everyone should know who Kenny Omega is by now. But yeah. even if they didn't, the fact that Jericho is pointing his finger at him saying, I want to fight you because I believe you're incredibly talented, mm-hmm. it's just like a huge like boost to that guy. And, and greatly so, because that's what Jericho should be doing right now. He should be helping build people up and that, because you know, he can't be around forever. And the wrestling business, I hope, will be, and you know, people like any other future. So hopefully one day he can be the next Jericho. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And yeah, he's, uh, I mean, it's fascinating. I was listening to the interview, uh, I don't know if you caught it, Matt, where Triple H was talking and you know, about it. And, you know, he was very like, yeah, I'm happy for Chris doing this and it's great for them. And I want to, like, it was almost like Triple H wanted to say, man, I will actually be watching this match, but he couldn't, he couldn't allow himself to do that. But he, he sensed it in his voice, like, you know, that, uh, you know, it's going to be a big match and that, you know, um, people are talking about it and whether he, you know, obviously his baby is WWE more than that NXT, but I mean, he's got to be thinking, Matt, cracky, I wish we would have had something like this going on, you know, like they literally haven't needed all this fancy stuff. It is just all about the match that's going to take place. Uh, it's a very old school way of looking at it, but you know, it just goes to show you, Matt, that formula is always there. I mean, amongst real diehard pro wrestling fans, you know, sometimes it is just about the two guys getting in the ring, that you know, two talented workers that can tell great stories from completely different worlds, almost coming together for this, um, and 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 that's what it's all about. Um, how how sort of excited are you for it, Matt? And and also Wrestle Kingdom in general, I guess. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm a hit of huge excited. Every time Wrestle Kingdom comes along, you're always sending me the videos of, look at this outrageous entrance, and man, it gets bigger every year. And those, those, those kind of ramps that they have to walk down, and we thought WrestleMania ones were bad because it's things like something else. Uh, they say that they have all the great technology over there, but then this thing lights up, and anything is possible when, when, when they put their mind to the uh, sort of grand uh, scheme, the entrances they want these people to have. Uh, but the frustrating thing is, like what you were saying to a point you had a minute ago about like that, was like they had WWE, like even though they want this kind of thing where a wrestler can come in and just be about a match, they had so many opportunities to do that themselves, especially with someone like Nakamura, you know, they should have just had Nakamura walk right in, he could have taken his pick out of anybody on the roster, and they should have let him choose himself who he wanted to fight, and it would have been gold just to walk into WrestleMania, and then he would have had a bigger pop than he's had his entire career with the WWE so far. Yeah, yeah, no, you <laughs> that's the see that's something they could have done so easily but uh, they, they chose not to. But yeah, that that would have been the uh the, the other version of it I guess. But yeah I'm looking forward to it. Um you know no doubt it's gonna be a great event, a great show. Um so yeah I'm gonna keep my eye on that and uh yeah but we'll be covering it on our podcast. I know we don't normally do New Japan stuff but we're gonna we're going to get that some some stuff on that. So keep up with us on that. It's going to be the beginning of January. I think it's like the 4th or the 5th, Matt, if I'm correct yeah. in saying that, somewhere around that. So, yeah, check that out. Uh, if anybody's interested in watching that uh, from the – well, I think you can get this from most places, but check out Access TV. It's, uh, of course, that's owned by Mark Cuban, who uh, – is a is a massive sort of massive owner and that is a huge wrestling fan he's uh, they've literally got that on there so it's kind of an easier way of getting access to it. it's a subscription thing but it's like the problem is with the new japan stuff and i have tried to use it in the past is like it's not very uh <laughs> well for us in the west it's not very friendly with the language and it can be really confusing as to what you're ordering and where the hell everything is so um, my recommendation would be to go to access tv and sign up with them because they'll have it included in their package and plus um, they have some excellent uh, indie promotions that even i'd not heard of and i was really getting into some of that stuff with uh, some of the women's all sort of promotion 
promotions that are around. So check that out uh, would be my advice there for anybody that is maybe getting a little bit frustrated with the WWE product maybe this time of year. Maybe you want to try something new and, and all the rest of it. Go to that. Check that out. Matt, um, did you see uh, anything of the Ring of Honor? Uh, of course, they had their sort of big pay-per-view as well going on and, and a new champion, Matt. I don't know if you, uh, you saw it or have heard the news. Uh, but as far as the pay-per-view goes, you know, of all this wrestling that goes on these days, that is in my schedule. That's for Thursday night. I've got that. I'm okay. Well, I have heard the news. There's no spoilers for me there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, listen, I, I saw, I've only seen the main event. I've got to watch the, the whole thing. I heard really good reviews about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, amazing job that those guys do. Of course, myself and Matt, we, we went there earlier in the year, and, and uh, I was – you know, blown away by what those guys can can do, and you know, it, we had some really great seats as well for that one, and it was it was a great show to watch some of those really talented guys. I've got to say, you know, sometimes it's not always about you know the big stars or the giant guys. Sometimes if you've got a you know that promotion has got such a, a good style, it's got such a good sort of healthy. Um, way of doing live shows i mean that's the thing i think with ring of honor matt i think we, we can both agree that ring of honor is not a tv promotion it is a live event promotion matt would you, would you agree in that when, when you look at the differences between some of these you know tna especially much more tv i find when they really shouldn't be they should perhaps stick to you know creating something to, for the crowd that are actually there that night as opposed to just being all about the tv sometimes Oh yeah, definitely. That's what sets it apart from uh, the other wrestling organisations. Mm-hmm. Is that they don't focus on backstage stuff. The yeah. Storyline happen, but they happen in the like, ring. In the ring. Yeah. Uh, and it's refreshing to have that. If you want to just enjoy wrestling for wrestling itself, you you should watch Ring of Honor. Uh, it cuts out all of that BS in the middle and just like gets down to the action. Yep. Um, okay, just want to uh, touch on a few other bits of news that have been coming out. Now, Matt, what did you make of this when you heard of this? Um, <laughs> a lot going on that, you know, WWE have trademarked the XFL and a couple of other names uh, going into this, like UFL have come out. that Vince has done that, has filed that as well as a trademark for the football. Um, obviously, very early days and nobody really knows what the hell is going on, but Listen, Vince McMahon, you know, he's a 72-year-old now. Does does he really want to get back into this, Matt? I mean, with all this WWE going on, what the hell? Uh, This seems, it it doesn't seem to make any sense in my part, but is there any real, you know, traction with this? We know that, I, I know enough about NFL that it's not been getting great views this year. It's been one of the worst down uh, as far as people watching it. And I guess, does Vince McMahon say to himself, now is the time, revive. <laughs> you know, he'll get his revenge somehow. Um, what, what do you make of all this, Matt, and uh, and, and these uh, tra- trademarking them? Like, is there is there any, do you think, tangible with this, or is this just uh, just sort of been a little bit overreacted here? Well, it's kind of a difficult topic for me, because, you know, I don't really know that much about the NFL to really have a, a, a credible opinion on the thing, but... Mm-hmm. For many, you know, the failure of it the first time around was quite decisive. You know, you think, okay, that that was a failed like expedition into that kind of sport. I might give that a miss again. But just to go there again, it's like, did you learn any lessons from the first time? Because really, you don't really need to be doing this. I mean, your own product requires your full, undivided attention right now. As it mm. is, I, I wouldn't be wasting like my resources putting it into other. Like prospect that might fail. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to read a quick news bullet in here. I just literally clicked on it just to see if there's any more news. And uh, the, the, the news report I'm reading here is that despite the original reporter of the story um, stated that the announcement about the XFL could be made on January the 25th, um, which this is the Thursday following the 25th anniversary of Raw, by the way. I uh, just want to throw that one out there because, of course, 
that's the sort of time if you think about announcing things something like straight after that would probably make some sense but fox sports noted that because the news was broken by a political source the league could be um sorry yeah the league 